How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here, and this is a new product from Beta FPV, the Meteor 75 Pro HD 1S Micro Quad. Yes, HD 1S. I didn't realize that was possible, but with the development of Walksnail and HD Zero, apparently it is. So inside there is a Walksnail Avatar Mini 1S Lite video transmitter. On the website, you see you can also get it in HD0. There's also an analog version that's much cheaper. So if you want to go analog, that's perfectly fine. And they give you different options for your bind and fly experience like ELRS, FreeSky. This is the TBS Crossfire because that's why I still run these days. So we have our Crossfire Nano receiver along with the Mini Mortal T. I don't know if you can see, 1102, 22,000 kV motors, 45 millimeter tri-blade props, and this camera apparently can go from zero to 40 degrees. The flight controller is an F4 1S 5 amp all-in-one, very, very small at 3.6 grams. 38 grams at 75 millimeters with one battery, 52 grams. Wow. And the battery that they supply with it, it comes with two R 1S and they're high volt, so 4.35 volt, and BT 2.0 connectors. We used BT 2.0 for the first time a couple years ago with the original Meteor 65, and I was always impressed by the ability for these batteries to churn out power through that connector and not sag out until they were indeed completely done. They have a nice little cradle here for the battery to slip into, and then you just use this BT 2.0 to connect. The Mini 1S light kit by Walksnail also has a 1080 60 FPS recording resolution as well as broadcast resolution. It can also do 720 at 100 frames per second. There is a built-in eight gigabyte recorder and to my understanding that might get you maybe 20 minutes of recording time before you fill it up and have to offload. So if you look on the side here, that little harness is what you would use this adapter with. They give this to you and uh, that's, the, that's the, uh, the plug, straight to USB. You plug this up to your computer, it becomes a source for your media, and you can, you can offload the video clips from here directly to a hard drive or something. Now one thing that they do say on the website is that the voltage of the battery has to be at least 3.1 volts for the, the HD system to work. So that means that even if you're able to fly this and if you had analog transmitter, you might have still gotten some video out if you were sagging below three volts. Uh, you really have to keep this above 3.1. Now with a bigger LiPo battery, that's a huge deal to keep it above 3.1. But with smaller 1S Whoop batteries, it's easy to use these down beyond, like past like to 2.9, 2.8. It's not always the end of the world, especially when these are sagging so low. They just don't have the power. But with the BT 2.0 connector, we shouldn't see it sag below 3.1 unless it's indeed 3.1. They also give you a charger. So in here, is a BT 2.0 charger. It's a USB full size to USB-C. You plug it in like this. You plug this into a USB power source and then you can go ahead and charge your batteries just like so. Hey, I didn't even realize that. You can check the voltage. Sweet. So that's 4.18. It's not quite full. I charged it part way earlier. This is 4.3. That's almost all the way full. Uh, these are going to be 4.35 high volt batteries once they're completely topped off. So my radio that I use is the Radio Master TX16S. I have Crossfire module on the back with my diamond antenna. On the back we're going to select Bind and this is unique to Crossfire so if you have ELRS or FreeSky it's going to be different for you. Binding on my module. Let's go ahead and plug in the Meteor 75. My Crossfire Nano right there has a little tiny button. I'm gonna push it and my radio found it. So it wants to update, that's fine because my module is probably a different firmware version from the uh, Nano RX. And we have bound our radio. It says binding okay, solid green light, solid green light. And we have our signal strength all the way up. And now we have to bind the Walksnail VTX to the Avatar goggles. Looks like it's gonna be right here. I'm gonna press that. All right, now it's red. Use a tool to press the bind button on the goggles. 
Okay, then it was binding because we heard it beep. There's me holding my goggles up to the camera overhead. This is not the best shot of what's going on, but yeah, right on. Let's get this in a beta flight, shall we? In order to do that, we're gonna use a micro USB cable right there to plug it into our computer. And we're gonna boot up beta flight on our computer. All right, we're all plugged in. Our accelerometer is working properly as accordance with what we see on the screen. Go into our ports tab. UART2 is going to be our MSP. Our CRRX for TBS Crossfire is UART1. Now, since this is Betaflight 4.4 we're using, it's very easy to get that WalkSnail Betaflight OSD working. When we look at the UART with the MSP enabled, all the way to the right under peripherals, if it says disabled, go ahead and click it and select VTX MSP plus display port. Remember to save and reboot. And then once you've done that, you can go over to OSD and start customizing your OSD. So in video format, we're in HD. We're gonna go to Imperial and then we can start adjusting some of these things. Also, make sure you have your low voltage OSD warning enabled. This way you won't get surprised by your VTX getting shut off mid-flight because you weren't paying attention to your battery voltage. So here's how I have my mode set up. I have ARM AUX1, beeper AUX2, flip over after crash AUX3, and angle AUX4. These right here are the rates that I use for pretty much every single FPV quad I own. And since this is a bind and fly, everything else should be okay in beta flight. Wow, so for, uh, first of all, it feels very controllable. The quad feels very nice and smooth despite flying in small bedrooms like this. I wanna go downstairs. Let's see if I can make it downstairs. New quad, new video transmitter. It feels very smooth and it's like, it's not twitching, it's not going crazy. Like for how small this is, this thing is very stable. I like this. So the Meteor 75 Pro is a lot of fun. It's got a lot of power for being a 1S quad. That's amazing. But because it has walk snail in it, the mini 1S Lite avatar board, uh, you gotta watch your battery voltage. And if you're flying around with this and you're not paying attention, you will have like, let's say 3.3, 3.4 volts left on the battery. And then before you know it, you're trying to punch out of something or you're diving and then a quick throttle up and the voltage sags just enough that your video cuts out, just like what just happened a few minutes ago. Now it's different from an analog version, maybe of this quad or something else where it's a 1S quad and the analog transmitter might still be operational at you know 3.1, 3.0, maybe 2.9 volts. Not the case with this one. You really have to monitor it or put a battery voltage alarm or like a warning on the OSD. I'm still enjoying the quad, but just gotta keep a couple things in mind like that. Uh, very quiet, easily rippable. I'm actually on a college campus right now and I don't think they even allow drones, but here I am because it's not loud and nobody cares. So let's get another pack in. Flying around, it feels really, really smooth. Unless you get some wind. And then in that case, some oscillations start coming out of the woodwork. But because this is such a small and light quad, you know, what can you expect really? In perfect wind conditions, it flies extremely smooth and I love it. Now they keep saying that you get an average of flight time of five and a half minutes with this quad. For me, flying outside, I was getting more like three minutes. Now it's a different pace than flying indoors and so I was definitely pushing it a lot harder and faster than if I was flying in my house. Out here, it's a bit of a challenging environment because it's really windy today. This guy was still doing okay. A uh, little bit of oscillation out here though with the wind, with the breeze. But indoors or on a, a calmer day, this thing really shines and it feels really, really good. Very, very smooth. Um, I was flying at a campus a few days ago and this was performing really great because it wasn't windy. The Avatar Mini 1S Lite VTX inside is pretty impressive and you know it can do your 1080 at 60 but it can also do your 720 at only 100 frames per second but of course the avatar goggles only have 100 hertz refresh rate so it's not a big deal you get 100 fps and that's good enough for something like this if you want to get your higher quality you go 1080 at 60 of course you have your eight gigabytes of internal storage so you can record your nice high quality footage without the vtx breakup now it's going to be warm weather i can't see myself flying this too much during the summer because hey we're out here it's great weather let's go ahead and fly a five inch you know but if you want to fly you know indoors 
or in a smaller space, this is gonna really shine. Thank you to Beta FPV for sending this to me and uh, check out more videos about this and other quads by Beta FPV in the future. Thanks so much for watching everybody and until next time, happy flying.